The book Reality Check tells you all you need to know about starting, growing, and maintaining any business. Entrepreneur, blogger, and venture capitalist Guy Kawasaki explains what it takes to stay ahead of the pack. Over the years, thousands of entrepreneurs have asked me for advice. After answering the same question over and over, I decided to aggregate the best of everything I've written and read about starting great organizations. The truth is that success doesn't take professional and proven people. Success takes crazy, passionate, and unproven people who believe that they can change the world. Reality Check is an irreverent guide to outsmarting, outmanaging, and out marketing your competition. Here are some examples of all three. There are a number of ways to outsmart the competition. One is what I like to call frame or be frame. The reality is that people will initially see your product as you present it to them. If you don't take the time to distinguish your product, somebody else will and that alone could be your undoing. For example, a music sharing site can frame its services as, quote, a music listener's revolution. This implies that record companies are oppressing people, that the very act of joining the service is a stand against the oppressors. That beats the heck out of piracy, doesn't it? Another great example is the $700 billion bailout of Capitol Hill. Why would anyone want to bail out the bunch of greedy, rich investment bankers who got us into this mess in the first place? But why is it framed as a bailout? The politicians could have framed the same bill as the best real estate opportunity in the last 100 years that we can use to fund alternative energy sources. But no, they didn't. And as a result, the bill was poorly framed. When starting a new business, you'd better frame or you will be framed. If you want to outmanage your competition, you have to understand your employees and how to manage their behavior. Carol Dweck, a Stanford psychology professor, spent 30 years studying why some people excel and others don't. Her belief is that people either have growth or fixed mindsets. People with growth mindsets view life as a series of challenges and opportunities for improvement. People with fixed mindsets believe that they are stuck as either good or bad people. The problem is that the good ones believe they don't have to work hard, and the bad ones believe that working hard won't change anything. All leaders will need to manage both types. Dweck identified a best practice called the effort effect, which suggests staying clear of praising your employees' brilliance or what they did right. They should give employees feedback about the quality of their effort instead. For example, you worked very hard. If people believe that your praise is based on the fact that they're smart, it can create risk-averse behavior and have quite the opposite effect that you want. Again, praise your employees' efforts, not their inherent brilliance. One of your greatest marketing tools is evangelism. That is, getting people to believe in your product and then spreading the love. You can blow all the smoke you like about partnerships, brand awareness, and corporate image, but you either attract believers or you don't. Memorize this, the key to great evangelism is great innovation. Evangelism, after all, comes from the Greek word for bringing the good news, not bringing the crappy news. The second most important determinant of the success of an evangelist is the love of the cause. Evangelist isn't simply a job title, it's a way of life. So if you've got a great product and a love of the cause, here's a roadmap. First, people have to get, quote, get your product in 10 minutes or they'll never get it. Do away with lofty, 
flowery terms like revolutionary, paradigm shifting. People don't buy revolutions. They buy aspirins to fix the pain or vitamins to supplement their lives. You will need to learn how to give a demo. This demo needs to quicken the pulse of everyone in the audience and be willing to meet with anyone who gets it and is willing to help you. Good evangelists are humble yet bold. I'm also a big believer in swag, anything with your logo on it, t-shirts, bags, mugs, pens, etc. These gifts are inexpensive but can go a long way, especially with believers. With that said, I don't recommend financially rewarding your evangelists. Monetary compensation changes the dynamics of true evangelism, and several studies have shown that it can even hinder the process. So there you have it. Three examples of outsmarting, outmanaging, and outmarketing your competition. I'll leave you with this quick checklist. First, watch for opportunities. Be willing to compete with the status quo and build products that people will fall in love with and then become your unpaid evangelist. The bottom line is that if you exhibit these qualities, you're probably as qualified as anyone to succeed. And that's the reality of today's business environment. Thank you for reading Reality Check. I hope you change the world.